Just let me know. After yet another successful revolution around the sun, humankind continues to advance at an ever-increasing pace. It's incredible to think that mere decades after conquering the skies, humans would walk on the moon. But even so, this was merely the beginning of the revolutionary space age that followed. The Venusian sky stations and the ever-expanding Mars colony established a multi-planetary safety net. The boom of the asteroid mining industry convinced even the most ardent skeptics that space exploration was a worthwhile endeavor and the lunar spaceport granted shape and easy access to easy. After yet another successful revolution around the sun, Humankind lingers on. It was a bit touch and go there for a while with the whole North Korean situation, but as luck would have it, we are still here to complain about it. The reclusive regime has had an exceptionally destabilizing year. A teaser for the apocalypse was released as early as February when the North Korean government decided to flaunt its military prowess by launching a ballistic missile over the Sea of Japan. Numerous launches would follow and the situation escalated on the 4th of July when the DPRK launched its first intercontinental ballistic missile, meaning they could soon possess the means to fling nuclear warheads across the Pacific. A month later, professional golfer Donald J. Trump, moonlighting as the President of the United States, issued a contentious response from his private golf course. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury and frankly power the likes of which this world has never seen before. Thank you. The supreme leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, responded within mere hours by threatening to strike the US territory, Guam, and some compared the rising tensions to that of the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. The United Nations imposed sanctions, but North Korea further escalated the situation by detonating a nuclear device in early September. Donald Trump doubled down on his readiness to destroy the rogue state in his address to the United Nations General Assembly on September the 18th. But if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Then in November, a dramatic scene of a North Korean soldier defecting to South Korea was captured at the demilitarized zone. He was shot five times, but fortunately survived his injuries after being rescued by South Korean soldiers. Meanwhile, the world looked on in suspense as this nuclear conflict devolved into a long-distance name-calling contest on both sides. Rocket Man. Little Rocket Man. He is a sick puppy. Kim calling the president a dotard, which means weak or senile person. Billions of years of evolution and the cause of our inevitable demise could unironically be a tweet. This is truly the worst timeline. So to distract ourselves from the looming threat of thermonuclear war, we have the annual concoction of trends and memes. The year kicked off with the inauguration of Donald Trump and in direct response to this event, actor Shia LaBeouf launched a project known as He Will Not Divide Us, an uninterrupted livestream that was intended to span the entire duration of the Trump presidency, allowing people to defiantly regurgitate the project's message. However, things did not exactly unfold as intended. Users of 4chan soon brigaded the livestream to spread their own unique message. He will come inside us. He will come inside us. Obey! Obey! Make America great again. He will divide us. And he will make America great again. The trolling resulted in the live stream being relocated and the camera being fixed on a solitary flag. However, it turns out that Chaya had severely underestimated the collective determination of these trolls as they quickly tracked the flag down and hoisted a red MAGA cap in its place. For a much more detailed summation of this absurd trolling campaign, YouTuber Internet Historian has made a great series on the topic which I highly recommend for anyone interested. 
A spinning plastic toy went through the typical meme life cycle of achieving sudden mass appeal, only to be denounced by the same people who popularized it a few months prior. The music video for Despacito became the most viewed video on YouTube. Two scenes from Star Wars Episode 3 were revitalized. Do you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. I am the Senate. The animated TV series Rick and Morty and the fandom surrounding it gave rise to a number of memes such as Session Sauce, Pickle Rick, and some IQ related copy pasta. Proof that God has forsaken us, the movie saw the light of day. A teenage girl momentarily attained fame by not being able to speak. Catch me outside, how about that? What does that mean? Pepsi proclaimed itself savior of the world in a beautifully tone-deaf commercial. A man announced this inability to be hot. The girl told me, take off your jacket. I said, babes, man's not hot. The thing goes, skitty kid, pop, pop. And the poop, 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 boom. Skia. Whatever this is. A guy sprinkling salt. The final chimes of Big Ben in London. And countless inanities which I failed to mention here. Since August of 2016, a hacker group known as the Shadow Brokers has been leaking various hacking tools developed by the US intelligence agency, the NSA. At the time of the leaks, cybersecurity experts cautioned that these tools could be used to launch far-reaching cyber attacks. And unsurprisingly, that is exactly what happened. In May of 2017, the WannaCry ransomware infected more than 300,000 Windows systems, demanding a ransom of up to $600 to be paid in Bitcoin in order for the infected system to be decrypted. Affected systems include hospitals in the UK and railways in Germany, and it looks like North Korea was behind the attack. However, in a stroke of luck, a guy from the UK accidentally stumbled upon a kill switch in the malware which effectively halted the attack. In late June, the Petya malware primarily struck the Ukraine as well as a few other countries. Unlike the WannaCry ransomware, Petya was designed to look like ransomware, while in reality its encryption was irreversible. Meaning that even if you did pay the ransom of $300, your data would not be restored. Speaking of ransomware, Battlefront 2 infected millions of systems back in November while demanding payment in exchange for a fleeting sense of pride and accomplishment. In other cybersecurity news, the breach of the American credit agency Equifax is among the worst in history. Highly sensitive and personal information of nearly half the American population was stolen and leaked by hackers over the course of several months, leaving some 143 million Americans open to identity theft. I deeply regret who we are and what we do. In YouTube-related news, we have the Adpocalypse fiasco. It began when Disney decided to sever its ties with PewDiePie in response to an article published by the Wall Street Journal in which they intentionally took jokes out of context in an effort to portray him as an anti-Semite. The story eventually morphed into what is now known as the Adpocalypse in which mainstream media outlets criticized YouTube itself for allowing adverts to be displayed on genuinely vile or otherwise inappropriate content. Videos about racism, terrorism, pornography, child exploitation, pedophilia and the list continues. Advertisers freaked out, abandoned the site en masse and ad revenue charts transformed into line rider maps. YouTube fixed the problem by introducing certain algorithms which, in theory, would automatically divide videos into various advertiser-friendly categories, but in practice turn the upload button into a demonetization slot machine. Some channels had their entire catalog demonetized, while others, like myself, only suffered the occasional issues. Hopefully things will improve by 2018. Like all years, 2017 was filled with anniversaries. Ten years ago, the first iPhone was released, hashtags became a thing, the final Harry Potter book was released, Pornhub was launched, the first installment of popular video game franchises such as Portal, Mass Effect, Bioshock, Assassin's Creed, The Witcher and Crisis saw the light of day. Fifty years ago, the Soviet Union landed a spacecraft on Venus, becoming the first country to visit the surface of another planet. The US stopped being afraid of interracial marriage, and the world's first ATM was installed in the UK. 
100 years ago, the United States entered World War I, the Russian Revolution led to the collapse of the Russian Empire and the subsequent rise of the Soviet Union. Finland became a country, if you can call it that, the US also purchased a few Danish-controlled islands in the Caribbean and renamed them the Virgin Islands in commemoration of their former landlords. 1,000 years ago, the 67th Emperor of Japan sadly passed away while sporting this unfortunate haircut. Although, the barber must have known what he was doing. I mean, there, there's no way that's an accident. He knew exactly what he was doing. 2017 was unfortunately a year plagued by record-breaking natural disasters. The annual monsoon season of South Asia struck with unforeseen severity as widespread flooding affected up to 45 million people and resulted in the deaths of more than a thousand. Rainfall normally expected within a week fell within mere hours and displaced millions across the continent. The Atlantic hurricane season was also one of the most active and by far the most destructive season on record, taking hundreds of lives and inflicting nearly $400 billion in damages, most of which were the result of three major hurricanes named Harvey, Irma and Maria. Harvey inflicted major damage along the Gulf Coast, primarily in the form of catastrophic flooding, while Irma and Maria struck the islands in the Caribbean and the state of Florida. The devastating destruction of islands such as Puerto Rico, Dominica and others triggered a humanitarian crisis as the rapid succession of the two Category 5 storms left millions without access to food, water, electricity and shelter. Sweeping wildfires also dominated the news as their unprecedented devastation broke record after record in places such as Canada, the US, Chile, France and Portugal. In September, Mexico was struck by two powerful earthquakes in less than two weeks. Hundreds died in the wake of the quake's destruction. Then in November, the deadliest earthquake of 2017 struck the border between Iran and Iraq, killing more than 600 and destroying tens of thousands of buildings. A human pie managed to become the most hated person on the planet when he decided to drag the internet back to the dark ages. Well, at least in the United States. The Federal Corruptions Commission's repeal of net neutrality was so unbelievable that thousands of deceased Americans were brought back to life just in time to vote in favor of the bill. Former President Barack Obama was so excited that even he could not resist the urge to express his support of a bill that aimed to repeal the very policies he helped to instate. And then he did it like 50 more times just to be safe. Democracy TM strikes again. However, some claim that the lack of net neutrality could be good for the internet and that internet service providers will act fairly and in the best interest of the American population. You see, they're not going to abuse the system, they just wanted the ability to abuse the system. It's nice to have that option, you know. They're not going to actually do it, though. But they could. But they won't. They could, though. But I'm sure they won't. But they certainly could. But nah. In early October, the prominent film executive Harvey Weinstein was accused by dozens of women of everything from sexual harassment to rape. Weinstein was soon ousted by his own company and this initial scandal triggered an onslaught of similar allegations against numerous Hollywood executives, producers, actors, as well as many people outside the movie industry. This cascade of allegations became known as the Weinstein Effect. The hashtag MeToo served as an awareness campaign and a vehicle for victims to publicly denounce sexual abuse and to highlight the widespread misogyny by men in positions of power. While the abuse had been systematically suppressed from the public, it appears to have been more or less an open secret within the industry. Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> At the start of 2017, one Bitcoin was worth around 1,000 US dollars, but throughout the year, the value of Bitcoin continued to rise, and by late November, it surpassed $10,000, making it one of the largest currencies in the world. And the Bitcoin price continued to rise until it peaked around $19,000 in mid-December. This unprecedented increase generated a lot of buzz in mainstream media and as a result the global interest in Bitcoin and other altcoins have grown significantly. 
However, this surge in popularity is also turning Bitcoin into somewhat of an environmental hazard, as Bitcoin mining is consuming vast amounts of energy. The global energy consumption of Bitcoin mining is now greater than the total energy consumption of entire countries, even third world countries like Denmark, which means that Bitcoin is technically worse than Denmark, which really puts it into perspective. Regardless of how great or not so great a year might have been, one can always rely on the space industry to inspire much needed hope for the future. In late March, the private spaceflight company SpaceX demonstrated the reusability of its rockets with the first successful reflight of an orbital class rocket booster. In more conventional terms, this rocket was launched and then landed twice whilst avoiding this. And then they did it again. And again. And again. Even the microtransactions company Electronic Arts gave space reusability a go but unfortunately blew it on the second launch. A rare and distant kilonova, which is when two neutron stars collide and merge into one, was detected in August by dozens of ground-based and orbital instruments. On August the 21st, America was invited to an exclusive preview screening of the much-anticipated event known as the End Times, when the sun was momentarily snuffed out of existence. Enthralled onlookers equipped with 3D glasses could do nothing but watch as the sweeping darkness engulfed the mortal plane and brought them face to face with the looming abyss of nothingness that is the end of existence itself. It received broadly positive reviews. The Cassini spacecraft concluded its 13-year-long mission with a kamikaze dive into the dim clouds of Saturn and captured this final image a few hours before its inevitable demise. But the most fascinating astronomical event of 2017 has to be the brief visitation of an extrasolar object. The asteroid known as Oumuamua passed through the inner solar system in September and was first detected a month later as it moved away from the Sun. Its terrific speed and hyperbolic trajectory precludes it from being part of the solar system and as such it is the first detection of an object from another corner of the galaxy. While the origin of this elongated space rock and the duration of its journey remains unclear, the solar system is likely the first star system it's encountered on its lonesome voyage through interstellar space. On the remote possibility that Oumuamua could be more than just a galactic drifter, multiple astronomical institutions either have or will survey the object for signs of artificial transmissions, but none have been detected as of yet. Already halfway to Jupiter, it will have surpassed the orbit of Neptune by 2022 and will ultimately return to a trans-sidereal existence for millions of years to come. <laughs>